Hi guys, don't forget to subscribe my channel and like this video. Okay, enjoy. Hi guys, Assalamualaikum. Welcome to the second part for the alkenes and alkynes compound. At lecture halls, I already explained to you guys about the alkenes compound. For this video, I will explain about the alkynes compound. Let's start. Alkynes is the higher carbons that contain carbon-carbon triple bond. And the structure of the compound must consist of C triple bond C. The general formula for the acyclic alkynes is CnH2n-2 while for the cyclic compound of alkynes give CnH2n-4. Now we move to the systematic nomenclature of alkynes. The first step you must change the name of hydrocarbon by using Y and E yin at the end of the name for the compound as a suffix indicating an alkyne. Therefore, from alkane, you use ane. For C double bond C, you use ine. And for the C triple bond C, you use yin. The next step, you must Identify the longest chain of carbon including C triple bond C. For example, at this compound, the longest chain you will get is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. At carbon number 3, it consists of C triple bond C. Why we cannot count the first carbon at this side? Huh? If you can see here, if I start from this side it will give one two three four and five which mean the car c triple bond c at the carbon number five by using the lowest number of c triple bond c therefore you will get the name of the parent chain as three octane it means at carbon number three it consists of C triple bond C. In common nomenclature, alkynes are named as substituted acetylines. For example, ethanes can be known as acetylene. It consists C triple bond C. For the one butane, it also known as ethyl acetylene. It means that acetylene that consists of C triple bond C and then the acetylene bonded with the ethyl group. For 2-pentine, it can be known as ethyl methyl acetylene. It means the acetylines come from the C triple bond C and then the C triple bond C bonded with the ethyl and methyl. And then when the alkynes become a substituent, for example, I take prop Pine. When the propyne becomes substituent, it will change its name into propyl group. For example, when it attached with bromine, it can be named as propyl bromide. Next, when there is a presence of substituent, we must follow the basic rule, which is we must select the site that gives substituent with the lowest number. For example, for this compound we name it as 3 bromo 2 chloro 4 octane instead of 6 bromo 7 chloro 4 octane this is because the substituent located at carbon number 2 and carbon number 3 at this side but if we count carbon number 1 from this side it gives substituent at 6 and 7 Therefore, we must select the site with the lowest number of substituents. Same as the second example, for this compound, it can be named as 1-bromo-5-methyl-3-hexines instead of 6-bromo-2-methyl-3-hexines. 3 means the C triple bond C located at carbon number 3. And then 1-bromo, it means that bromine attached at carbon number 1 and methyl groups attached at carbon number 5 but if we select the first carbon at this site it will give the metal carb metal group at carbon number 2 
and the bromine at carbon number 6 which give the total number of 8 compare then the 1 and 5 methyl it give the total number of 6 therefore select this name as the correct name for the compound next is about diines anines and triines diines is a compound with two triple bond for example at this structure it consists two c triple bond c for anine this is a compound that consists of one double bond and one triple bond for example like this compound and for triene is a compound that consists of three triple bonds for example like this one at this structure it consists of three c triple bond c for enines alkynes always become the parent name and at the case when c triple bond c and c double bond c located at the end of carbon chain the carbon number one always at the carbon attached to the C double bond C same like at this compound however when the double bond located not in the terminal while the C triple bond C located at the terminal of the carbon chain carbon number one always for the carbon that attached to the C triple bond C in here that's why for this compound it can be named as 4 methyl 7 onin 1 yin. It means 1 indicate the C triple bond C at carbon number 1. 7 means C double bond C located at carbon number 7. And 4 methyl indicate the methyl group that attached to the carbon number 4. Next, I will show a few examples in naming alkynes compound. Let's start for the first compound here. So, the first step is you must find the longest chain of carbon with the lowest number of C triple bond C. So, then if I start from here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, then carbon at carbon number 3, it gives the C triple bond C. However, if I start from here, it will give 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. At carbon number 2, it gives C triple bond C. By comparing 2 and 3, we must select the lowest number. So then, we will start the carbon number 1 at this side. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Then, I can write down the parent name as... 5 pen 2 yin 2 means C triple bond C located at carbon number 2 next we move to the substituent so in this compound consists of metal group and cyclopropyl group at carbon number 4 for both of them that's why between methyl and cyclopropyl, I will start with cyclopropyl first because it must follow the alphabetical order rules. So then I can write down the full name of this compound as 4-cyclopropyl 4-methyl pent to yin. For the second compound, since it consists of double bond and triple bond here, this is an yin compound. Next, you can detect that C triple bond C located at the terminal, while the C double bond C not located at the terminal. That's why we start the carbon number 1 at C triple bond C. 1, 2, 3, and 4. 5, 6, and 7. Then I can write down the parent name which is heptin 1 yin, and then at carbon number 5, got C double bond C, 
and at carbon number 4, it consists of substituent that we call it as isopropyl. So then I can write down the full name of this compound as 4 isopropyl 5 heptin 1 in. Next, we look into the preparation of alkyne. For your level, I only focus one reaction that can prepare the alkynes, which is the elimination reaction of dihalide. At this reaction, the alkyne can be prepared from the 1,2-diphenyl ethyl when it reacts with the bromine gas and CH2Cl2, then it will form the intermediate product which is the 1,2-dibromore 1,2-diphenyl ethane. Then, this intermediate product will be treated with the potassium permanganate and ethanol to produce diphenyl acetylene. It means that it eliminates two hydrogen from the intermediate product to become the C triple bond C. Next, we move to the reactions of alkenes compound. So these are the reactions that I will explain in this video. Let's start with the first reaction of alkynes which is the hydrohalogenation. This reaction is an addition reaction of alkynes that's similar with the alkenes reaction. However, in this reaction, the alkynes when it react with HBr, it will first produce the intermediate of alkene with the addition of bromine and hydrogen here. Next, this intermediate of alkyne will further react with HBr to produce dihalide alkene. This reaction follow the Markovnikov rules. It means that, for example, in here, Br when it react with HBr, the Br will attach to the carbon with more alkyl substituent group and hydrogen will attach to the carbon with this substituent group. For example, when one hexane reacts with HBr in the presence of carboxylic acid, it first produces an intermediate of alkene which is 2-bromo-1-hexene. Then, it will further react with HBr to produce the final product which is 2-2-dibromohexene. Both of bromine will attach to the carbon with more substituent group here. So, this is the alkyl substituent that attach to the this carbon. Next, when the symmetrical alkynes go through the hydrohalogenation, for example, 3 hexane it react with HCl in the presence of ammonium chloride and carboxylic acid, it will produce the Z isomer of alkene. The 3 hexane react with HCl, it will produce Z3 chlorohexene. It means the priority group at the same site. So this is the mechanism of hydrohalogenation of alkynes. Similar with the hydrohalogenation of alkenes, it starts from the C triple bond C, when one bond of C triple bond C will attack the hydrogen, and then bond between hydrogen and bromine will share to the bromine to form the bromine ion. When one bond of C triple bond C attack the hydrogen, the other carbon will lose electrons. That's why it will produce the intermediate carbocation here. Bromine with more electrons will act as nucleophile and then it will share two electrons to the carbocation and form the bond between carbon and bromine here. Next reaction is the halogenation reaction. In the halogenation reaction, when alkyne react with hydrogen gas in the presence of CH2Cl2, it will produce the trans intermediate. For example, when one butyne react with bromine gas in the presence of CH2Cl2, first it will produce E12-dibromo-1-butene. 
Then when the trans intermediate go through further reaction with more bromine gas, it will produce the final product of 1122 tetra bromobutan. Next is the hydration reaction when alkyne is treated with the aqueous sulfuric acid in the presence of mercuric sulfate catalyst it will produce an enol an enol means it consists of c bond oh and c double bond c however an enol is intermediate product it will rearrange itself to produce a more stable isomer which is ketone the rearrangement of an enol to ketone we call it as keto enol tautomerism at this rearrangement at first c double bond c will attack the hydrogen then when one bond of c double bond c attack the hydrogen it will produce the positive charge as at this carbon then to neutralize the positive charge of this carbon bond between oxygen and hydrogen will share it electron to form the C double bond O then it will form the keto tautomer in the hydration process there are two types of reaction that involve different structure of alkynes the first case when the C triple bond C not in the terminal it means the C triple bond C in the middle of the structure for this case when alkynes treated with the aqueous sulfuric acid it will produce the possible ketones it means that C double bond O can be formed at carbon A and carbon B that's why it gives two different products however for the alkynes with the C triple bond C at the terminals it only produce one species of ketone at this case OH will attach to the carbon with more alkyl substituent in here then it will rearrange itself to form the ketone that's why it only give one product for example at first compound pentuin this is an internal alkyne when it treated with the aqueous sulfuric acid it will produce two di two different products or two possible products First, when C double bond O form at carbon A and C double bond O form at carbon B. That's why it will give pentan 3 on and then pentan 2 on when C double bond O form at carbon B. For example, 2, which is the terminal alkyne, pent 1 ion. When it treated with the aqueous sulfuric acid, it only form one product. C double bond O only form at carbon A here. Then it will produce one product only, which is pentan to on. Another types of hydration which disobey the Maconikov rules known as hydroboration. Hydroboration reaction is one of the oxidation reaction of alkynes. In this reaction, when alkynes react with boron in the presence of THF, it will produce a intermediate product known as a vinylic boron. Further reaction of vinylic boron with hydrogen peroxide, it will produce enol. Then it will rearrange itself to achieve more stable isomer which give the final product as ketone for the alkyne with C triple bond C at the terminal when it react with boron and hydrogen peroxide it will produce aldehyde this is because this reaction disobey the Markovnikov rules so in conclusion in hydration when terminal alkyne will react with aqueous sulfuric acid it will produce a methyl ketone because this reaction obey the Markovnikov rules however when a terminal alkyne react with boron and hydrogen peroxide it will produce an aldehyde next is about the hydrogenation reaction this is one of the types of reduction reaction 
Similar with the alkynes reaction, when the alkynes compound is treated with the hydrogen gas in the presence of catalyst, for example, platinum, palladium, or nickel, it will reduce itself into alkenes. For the reaction of alkenes in the reduction reaction will produce the final product which is alkenes. In hydrogenation reaction, alkenes can be converted into the cis alkenes isomer. When the alkenes is treated with the gas hydrogen in the presence of Lindla catalyst. For example, in this compound, 5 decan when it reacts with the hydrogen gas in the presence of Lindla catalyst, it will reduce itself into cis 5 decan While when the alkynes is treated with lithium in the liquid ammonia, it will reduce itself into the trans isomer. For example, when 5 decan is treated with lithium, in liquid ammonia, it will reduce itself into trans 5 decane. Therefore, you have the options to produce different types of isomer of alkenes from alkyne. The oxidation reaction of alkynes with potassium permanganate is quite similar with alkenes. Since potassium permanganate is a strong oxidation reagent, it will cleavage the C triple bond C and oxidize the alkynes into carboxylic acid. For the first case, when an ethanol alkynes treated with the potassium permanganate, C triple bond C will cleavage into two and then both part with go through the oxidation to form two carboxylic acids. For a terminal alkynes, when it treated with potassium permanganate, it also lead to the cleavage of C triple bond C. Carbon with alkyl substituent group here will go through and oxidize to form carboxylic acid. While carbon that attach with the hydrogen only, it will oxidize to form carbon dioxide. Next, we move to the last reaction of alkynes, which is the alkylation of acetylite ion. This is the process to add the alkyl group into the stretch chain of alkyne. Before the addition of alkyl group into the stretch chain of alkynes, the acetylate ion must be formed. The acetylate ion can be formed from the reaction of strong anhydrous bases with a terminal acetylate. In the reaction, the strong anhydrous bases, which is sodium ammonia, will act as nucleophile, then it will attack the hydrogen from the C triple bond C terminal. Then the alkynes will rearrange itself to form the acetylate ion. Next, the acetylate ions will act as nucleophile. The acetyl ion will go through the substitution reaction with alkyl halide to form new long stretch chain of alkynes. Therefore, in this reaction, you can determine how many carbon can be added into the alkynes based on the stretch chain of alkyl halide. In conclusion, when acetylene react with the sodium ammonia and alkyl halide, it will produce a terminal alkyne. While when a terminal alkyne react with sodium ammonia and alkyl halide, it will produce an internal alkyne. However, the alkylation reaction has limitation. The reactions only are efficient with primary alkyl chromides and primary alkyl iodides. The reaction of acetylate ions with secondary and tertiary alkyl halide give dehydrohalogenation, which it will convert the alkyl halide into alkene. So this is the example when the secondary alkyl halide reacts with acetylate ion. Instead of the alkylation reaction, it will form the cyclohexene. Last but not least, you can use this mind map to be your notes. So you just fill up the regions based on the reaction. 
so this is the reference that you can refer for the topics that's all from me see you then and bye